in the Welcome to See You in the Lobby, women's basketball's newest and least filtered podcast where some of us bet on women a little better than others. I am WNBA writer Matt Ellentuck, and I'm here with former WNBA all-star Marissa Coleman, and this is the Hangover Edition. <laughs> I like Hoodie Matt. I, I, we need Hoodie Matt more, more often. This is what happens when we record on Labor Day. I know, yeah. Too, too many uh, white cloths yesterday. And also, this is what happens when we record after that ridiculous Aces Storm game that I don't think I'll ever be recovered from. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, it, it is really stressful being a, a fan, but we'll talk about Thank that Thank you. Later. I've been saying it. I always <laughs> say it. MVP, not that hard. Fan on the couch, horrendous. <laughs> All right, well, let's, I'm actually kind of sad about this this week, but not only is it Labor Day. It's Matt has finally got a dub day. <laughs> Matt won both bets last week. I said that Chicago was going to out-rebound Connecticut. They did not. He said John Quo was going to have at least 23 points, and she had 23 on the nose. Because it's hangover episode, what I'm going to do is take this shot of ginger ale, and I'll, 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 I'll owe Matt when we're back together in person. Yeah, but you owe me two shots of ginger ale, to be fair. <laughs> Listen, Matt, it's been a weekend, okay? <laughs> Can we please begin with a highlight that I cannot get out of my head? Because Kurt Miller being mic'd up for a moment in which he tells his players, not only can they not make a layup, that he's about to get fired because he can't make a layup. <laughs> that was legendary. Any suggestion on pro players making a layup? Like, honestly, like, I, I'm going to get fired because we can't make a layup. But two, that's one why coaches don't want to be mic'd up because they can't be candid. But two, I'm so glad that he was because that is hilarious and so true. Like, I mean, I've missed layups in my day. We all have. But it, it, there's nothing more frustrating as a fan. They're watching teams play and they're, they're missing layups. It was so constant, too. Like, it was Connecticut was really in that game for majority of it until we had the any suggestions on pro players making a layup breakdown. <laughs> I think that, that, was, that was the point where there was no return. <laughs> and I can't imagine, like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that probably pissed his team, his, his players off, so we'll see how they respond, but it actually was hilarious. But when you're playing a team like Chicago, you can't afford to miss layups. Like, you need every little thing. You almost have to play a perfect game. You can't, you can't miss the easy layups. It was the candidness of his realization that, like, those miss layups are what's going to get him fired. Like, <laughs> these right here, nothing else, but this right here is why at the end of this season, <laughs> like, as a fan, knowing he's coaching these games, like, oh, yeah, I'm out. Like, this, I am going, this is going to be it if I lose this game. Like, is incredible background knowledge. I think, I honestly think after last year, they might have, they should have thought about parting ways but yeah i mean that's a serious serious topic though like i mean we can skip right to it john Quell getting benched in the last couple of minutes of the game i think she came back in with what like 30 or 40 seconds or something like that but kurt mm -hmm. took her out with three minutes to play in a tight game like there are issues connecticut's kind of having that meltdown i agree i think it might be time to just shake that team up in general I mean, how long has the W community been having these conversations about when is Connecticut going to be Connecticut's year? Then they get DB and everybody's like, okay, like this is what they needed to get over the, the hump. So they have a great team on paper. None of us can deny that. They have a really great team. And to be fair, they don't have Jasmine Thomas and having a, not having a veteran point guard to make a deep run, that, that kind of hurts them too. But I think they might need to look at shaking this team up. It's because Kurt is a good coach. He may not be the coach to coach this particular group, but I don't know. Like, how much? If you're a Connecticut front front office, how long do you give this particular group to see if they can pull it off before just like counting your losses? So you're saying if if Connecticut takes the takes the L in Game Four or even in Game Five, that there's there's no way you would bring back the same group, even knowing that Jazz Thomas was was injured and it could look a little different next year. I think I might shake it up. I'm not like saying a big shake up, but I do think 
it's it's worth considering seeing what what other pieces are out there that might be you know be able to do some trades or signs I, I it's been how many years now and it's the same conversation every year when is kinetic what is kinetic need do they need another coach do they need this person do they need that person do they need another score do they need a rebounder it's like how many years is this going to have to happen you can't keep hanging your hat on like we almost won in 2019 yeah. <laughs> like that's that's not going to continue to cut it. Um, no, I agree with that. I mean, I really wonder if the, the big piece that everybody thinks is is gettable in this offseason is Skylar Diggins Smith, right? Like, I wonder if Connecticut tries to find a way to land her because that fit seems to make a lot of sense to me. Why does that make, I can't, that does not make sense to me, but I want to hear your argument. I mean, if, if Skylar, Skylar's a competitive player, right? If she wants out of Phoenix, I can't imagine a better fit for her to go compete for a championship than if you put her in Connecticut, especially you, if you're able to keep Jazz Thomas. Makes do a lot you of sense. see her working with the personalities that are in Connecticut and then vice versa? Because Skylar's a big personality, we, we learned this year. <laughs> and she she's vocal, so I don't, I don't know like her coming into that situation. She's already shown that I mean, she left Dallas, went to Phoenix, and it's not like she was, you know, kind of just took a back seat to work her way in. Like she came right in and, and was Skylar Diggins. So is she gonna would she go into this environment in Connecticut and kind of take a back seat and kind of see where she fits in? I don't think so. So I don't know if 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 I could see that working. Listen, we'll see. I think it's gonna look different regardless. I'm with you. I think Kurt Miller is probably out, as he kind of already said, uh, <laughs> if this series doesn't go their way. But they he went just... home and was taking shots like fuck. All these missed layups. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to go out this way. <laughs> it's the way he phrased it. Any suggestions on pro players making a layup? <laughs> I would I would hysterically laugh. There's just no way. There's just no way. It's the funniest phrasing he could have ever imagined. Anyway, let's move off Connecticut for right now because I really, really want to spend most of the time on on Seattle, Las Vegas, because that series was that, yeah. absurd. It, insane. Insane. It it we need seven games. Five is not gonna be enough. Seven hundred games. I think I blacked <laughs> out in the final like ten seconds. It was just bucket after bucket after bucket and like everyone i thought was the one and it never was it was the most insane game it's like big shot after big shot and to your point i was like okay like there's no way somebody's gonna like when raquana hit that three after i think steph hit one and then she hit one i'm like how is this happening the last three minutes of that game I, would, I wish I had my Apple Watch on to see what my blood pressure was because it was so intense. Like, the most exciting game of any sport, men, male, female, any level I have seen, I, I can't think of a more exciting game I've watched in quite some time. That, it's just, I feel like these teams are so well matched for each other. And it also, they just, there's so many stars in it. It's it's also like it's com it's played at a completely different pace from Chicago, Connecticut. There's just like so many clutch moments happening, mm -hmm. incredible offense, incredible shooting, even like and there are it's not like no defense was played. It's just like the offense is nuts. Chelsea Gray is playing at a level I've never seen Chelsea Gray play at. And that's saying a lot because she always plays at a really high level in the playoffs. She is playing out of her mind like it's she's controlling the game in many ways but the way she's scoring right now is unbelievable this this series is what the league needed it's what we needed it's stressful because i will say i do want seattle to win i would love to see my girl brie jan go out with a championship and, and and sue too um seattle will have more opportunities but i think i I'm, I'm a sucker for storybook endings and i think that'd be cool but this series i saw a stat that 11 10 points were scored in the last 11 seconds of the game. In the final minute, it was 87 to 85 with 54 seconds to go. And it ended up being 92-92. <laughs> What's Insane. the math on that? That's a lot Insane. of points. It, it, was, it was big shot after big shot. And it, and it just showed, like, it shows the maturity of these players. And, like, you have vets. When you have vets, you don't panic. You you don't panic when you're down two with a few seconds left because you know what can happen 
in, in, in such a short amount of time. It was crazy. I just can't get over the legendary shot of Sue Bird that will not be legendary. <laughs> I, here's the other thing. Here's, here's my beef with streaming, which isn't new beef, but it specifically heard in that game where I obviously I have Twitter up and I'm watching the game and then I see, you know, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. And then I see somebody write in all caps, Sue Bird before the play happens on my TV. And I was like, no way, no way, no way. <laughs> and like I was sitting there waiting to watch it and the shot goes in and on my TV, it says there's like 0. 0.2 seconds left. So I'm tweeting like, Oh my God, you couldn't have written this any better. And then, I'm refreshing again, and then everyone starts writing in caps like Jackie Young, and I was like, no, <laughs> not again. This happened again. <laughs> and I didn't get to process literally anything that happened. Yeah, it was it was crazy. So I had some friends over yesterday to watch the game, and we were watching it on my on my deck, but I had it on on the deck, and then I had it on the TV in the family room, and I'm like cooking in the kitchen and watching the game. Then I'm going outside and it's 30 seconds ahead. So I'm like, dang, like I'm so, like so exactly the same thing you were doing. I was like watching it in one TV that was super delayed and then the other one, but man, there's so many things. I mean, let's talk about Tina missing those free throws. That kind of scared the crap out of me at first. I was like, there's there's no way that, that Las Vegas can come back into this game until that happened. And then I was like, e mm, 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 mm. I mean, you can't, it, it never comes down to one particular play. So it's the team and missing those free throws is not the reason why they lost that game. As he not contesting Jackie Young shots, not the reason why they lost the game. Like it, those are just the moments that we're going to remember but they did get out rebounded. <laughs> I mean, the game was so even other than rebounding. I was looking, they both had eight turnovers. Like the scoring, like when you're getting 17 points out of Sue Bird, you should win the game if you're Seattle, especially when Stewie's doing what Stewie does. And so who did Jewel have 17? Somebody else had 17. Stewie, Stewie was quiet. The first half, she was super quiet. She was, but then she went into God mode. <laughs> It was like literally she was I'm like, yo, like our friends are looking around like this is insane. It was it was super fun to watch. Coach coaching did play a big part in this. I I down the stretch, Seattle made some questionable moves in my opinion. I don't think Tina should have been back in the game and I don't think Tina should have been back in the game at the end. She she wasn't doing anything that great to to, to put her back in. Honestly, Tina Tina does have some lapses on defense often, so it's not like you're going to put her in for defense. You don't necessarily need her in there for offense when you have who you have. As he can essentially what they're putting Tina back in the game for, I truly believe as he can do. And you know, we talked about this when Tina first got to Seattle, how that was going to affect Ezzy and her confidence. I do think that plays a big part because now her role has drastically changed, and. Like she might be playing a little, a little tense, but <clears throat> Tina shouldn't have been back in the game. Gabby, I mean, she's Gabby. She she had some big plays for them, but after Tol Tolbert's game last game, how well she played, and then she hit clutch threes she for was them. Awesome in this game too. This I did game, not have Stephanie Talbot as like somebody who's going to play a role in this series. And she played. She's been playing great for them the last two games. I would have rolled with her towards the end too. And, and not Gabby. And I think she's proven that she can play defense. You know, Holly Rowe rep reported, you know, that she's no, like she said, she's known for defense in Australia. And she, she has shown she can be really solid and come up from them. So that's, that's, that's number two. Um, and I think there was kind of some mismanaging of the clock. But, I mean, hindsight, 2020. <laughs> so it's, it's, but man, when Sue hit that shot, I was like, yes, like, this this like, is this no is way. why sports are so amazing. This is why. I just needed Ezzy to just go like this. Just go That's, like this. Okay, Marissa, before we got on this, I watched that play over and over again because I was like, how did this how did this happen? Like how did Jackie Young just have this wide open layup? And nothing complex happened on that play. I don't It is it's like this it's the split second where Ezzy hesitated. I think she was anticipating a screen and anticipating the switch. And they, all they did was just cut off each other. But I'm sure in the timeout, they said, let's switch everything. She was anticipating that because she's seen two players come together. And all Jackie did was curl to the block. 
and she was a couple steps behind, but all she had to do was go like this. That's like, like what's her wingspan? Just what's her wingspan? Her. That would have been better. See, I, I disagree with the fact, like, it's better. In, I don't want to say it's necessarily better than what she did, but she just all she had to do was go like this. It, and then if she did this and she fouled, I can live with that. But to just literally back up and have your hands it was down. Deflating. It was deflating. And then they got they got ran off the court in overtime. I just felt like yeah. the vibes were bad after that. Yeah, it was bad. I, I mean, they came back. Were they down 17 at one point? Something like you come, that, yeah. You come, you come back, you're down 17. The game was in your... Like, you won that game. You had multiple opportunities to put it away. But dang, like, Tina has to make those free throws. Again, it doesn't come down to that. But Tina, you're a vet. This is the moment you've been waiting for. To, com- to, to truly compete for a championship. Like, She's going to regret that if, if Seattle loses this series. You can't, you can't miss both. You got to give me one. There's one other play, Marissa, that is drawing some, some controversy, which was like four buzzer beaters before the actual buzzer beater. Uh, Asia Wilson's bucket, uh, where she took, she took a lot of steps. Look, we can both agree that Asia is our MVP for this season. Asia is a great player. Asia's My cool, MVP but we, sure. we, we have to call it like it is. Asia traveled her ass off this play. Asia traveled her ass off. I, I have watched this play a couple of times, and I lose count at how many steps it was. It was a lot. She shuffled as she got the, as she's making her move. She shuffles. Do you remember? You know, you're probably too young for this. Do you remember the Disney movie Double Team? I know what you're talking about. Yes, it was like Hetty and Heidi, Heidi Berg or something. But there, I'm gonna send you the clip afterwards. But one of them does this like for the game winner. There's like she just does this little step thing. I gotta show it to you. But that's what Asia reminded me of when she was like gathering. It's so, like the gather she traveled. Then after the spin move, she took three steps. She took a lot of steps between that and you saw Tisha's tweet. <laughs> Tisha Tisha yeah. Benjamin's tweet. Holly said, walk me through that play. Keyword, walk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't guard somebody that takes six steps. You're not anticipating the extra three, three and a half. There was, there was a bunch of wild stuff between that and how much time was left on the clock after Subert hit the three, which apparently there was a difference between the broadcast on TV versus what was in arena. So there was discussion on how much time should be left. Because when Sue hit the shot for people on TV, it looked like there was only 0.2 seconds left and that the game was over. But yeah, um, that was just pure chaos. I wonder if they, they're going to submit like, a, like the refs sometimes have the final two minute report. Like, I wonder if they have that for this series to show, like, what the call should have been in the final Yeah, <laughs> and then they'll come out and apologize. It's like, F your apologies. It doesn't do shit for me now. We Like, if I'm Seattle, we lost the game. Like, thanks. Appreciate your, your apology. So, with that, where, where do you have this series going? Does Vegas taking the first Seattle game make you think that they could close out on Tuesday? Matt, I'm stressed. I really am. <laughs> I really am because now I'm just like, that's a demoralizing loss if you're Seattle. Like, those are one of those that like, I know they all woke up thinking about it, especially those that had the magnifying miss cues, I guess, in the last final couple minutes. Oh man, I don't know. It's it's definitely going to five. It's going to definitely go to five. But I th- I think it's a toss up. Before the series started, I, I mean, we talked about it. I definitely had Seattle, and that was, it was almost without a doubt in my mind. Now, Vegas keeps finding ways. They keep finding ways, and every game has been close. And with Derricka back in the lineup, I don't know. I don't want to answer. Derricka only played like three or four minutes. She wasn't really in there. I think she was more of like a, like a, just a decoy to sort of start to throw off Seattle's rhythm. But yeah. I wonder if she, if I wonder if she can actually play bigger minutes because that, that might dictate things. But I don't know. All I know is that I'm very, I'm very, very happy with how these semifinal series are going. Like the, they're clearly the, clearly the best four teams. I feel like eighty percent of the best players in the league are on one of those four teams, and that's made it like ridiculous to watch. Yeah, it's been fun for sure. Alrighty, let's uh, kick this off with our bets for for this week. And we will actually be in person for them 
So if you lose those, by the way, you're going to have to take four shots, but we're going to deal with that at another. Oh, now, now you're good at math. Earlier, you weren't good at math. Now, now you're good at it. All right, what's your bet? You go first. Oh, hmm. I don't even know what, like the numbers have been so crazy in Seattle, Vegas. I don't even know what would be considered like a fair bet here. I'm going to say that Asia's gone off for 30 in what, two or three straight games? Two, because you remember game one, she was non-existent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say the streak continues. Okay. I'm going to have Asia going for 30 in game four. Okay, and I'll go with Stewie having 30 in game four. And then we're both going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome, Jesus. Oh, I it, 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 it's the, it's the, it's the hangover episode. The like. hang I was going to say thank you for attending the hangover edition. I now need to uh, go to sleep so I can recover for, for game force. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Not good night. <laughs> Back to back, back, back to the lobby. <laughs>